Hey everybody, Tom Sheehan of Compass here with your May of 2020 market update for Greater Boston. I know it's coming to you late in May, but I wanted to get you the most up-to-date information as possible. And so I hope you're getting adjusted to the reality. I hope you're safe and healthy. Um, we're all trying to get adjusted and make do with what uh, the current circumstances have given us and the current real estate market is no exception to that. So let's get over the, go over the numbers. We now have our final April of 2020 numbers. Now, something to keep in mind, when we talk about April sales prices and April sales to list price ratios, we are looking at, we're really getting the numbers for what happened in March. Now you'll remember that COVID-19 didn't really take hold and impact the real estate market until the end of March. And you might recall from my last video, I said how active the market was in the early spring uh, months of February and March and how it was extremely seller friendly. So the sales price numbers for April are gonna tell us what was going on in March. What hey everybody, the quick edit here, after rewatching the video, I realize now that I wasn't as clear as I wanted to be on what I meant by when we're getting the April uh, sale price numbers, it really is telling us what happened in March. That's because when we have closed numbers like April, the properties that close in April really are showing what was happening in March because that's when the offer was negotiated between the buyer and seller. Then the typical timeline of five or seven weeks for a property to go under agreement to actually sell, we don't see what those final figures were until that next month. So when I say when we want to see what the April median sale price was really tells us what was happening in March, well that's because the terms of that deal that closed in April were negotiated in March. So the April numbers are really telling us what the market activity and what the atmosphere was in March. Hope that's a lot more clear than I would just on. was in March. What the numbers are for listings and pending sales for April is going to show us really what the COVID-19 effects were since that is when we were in the thick of our social distancing and our stay at home advisories in Massachusetts. So April single family median sale price was up year over year. So 2020 of April compared to 2019 of April up seven and a half percent, almost seven and a half percent, 7.3% to 665,000. The sale to list price ratio, so the percentage of the uh, sale price to the original list price was up 1.5% to 99.8% for single families in greater Boston in 2020 when compared to 2019. So indications of a very strong seller's market. Condos. Median sale price of a condo in April of 2020 compared to April of 2019, which again is showing us what was going on in March of 2020 from a uh, market activity. The median sale price was up 8.6% to $598,000, a huge jump in values of, over the course of one year. The sale price to list price ratio was about the same as it was last year at 99.9%. That means on average, the sale price compared to the original list price of a condo in Greater Boston sold for 99.9% .9 of the original list price. So again, this isn't surprising for April, even though we were in the thick of the uh, COVID-19 situation and the market and the society as a whole was extremely slow. The Greater Boston real estate market right up until that point was extremely seller friendly and very red hot. So what happened in April? You might recall that uh, when in my last video, I was seeing that in April, we were seeing about half the level of activity, which was normal for April, uh, which is usually mid spring market in greater Boston. And those numbers bear it out. We were, saw about half as many new listings year over year, April of 2020 compared to April 2019, and about half as many pending sales. So again, the same number of sellers and buyers left the market. The market was just half as active. So the conditions didn't really improve for uh, sellers or buyers during the mid pandemic. It was just half as much activity as normal. So what has happened in May? What's my current in the trenches view? 
Well, looking at the new listing numbers, the new inventory, the number of homes coming on the market, for May of 2020, when compared to May of 2019, we're seeing very little difference. We're seeing about the same number of listings in Greater Boston, both single families and condos, for May of 2020 that we had seen in May of 2019. And my anecdotal in the trenches view is that it's still extremely seller-friendly conditions out there. The inventory is still too low to satisfy the buyer demand. We're seeing multiple offers all over the place with property selling well over the asking price in terms very favorable to the seller. What remains to be seen is how uh, June goes. Typically, June is much slower than April and May, and we wind down about until July 4th when things really come to a halt. What we don't know is if the homes that we didn't see listed in April will be pushed back and that we'll see more homes listed in June and July to compensate for the ones that didn't come on the market in April. It's really anyone's guess. What we also don't know is if we do see this higher than normal number of listings come on the market in June and July, we see the same number of buyers come into the market who had maybe not come into the market in April. And if that new inventory will get uh, snatched up at the same rate that we've been seeing the inventory uh, that we saw in February, March, and now May. So I know that information is gonna come as a surprise to many people. You're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We have stay-at-home advisories. We don't have the traditional open house um, opportunities that we usually do where people can come and go as they please. It's much more structured and limited right now. Yet we're still seeing the same level of activity in still very, very seller-friendly conditions. I'm anxious to see what happens in the summer and whether or not we have much more active summer than in years past. And I'll definitely be here to keep you in the loop. As always, if you have any questions about a particular property, your, your real estate situation, or have friends, family, or coworkers who have a situation that they need help on, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. So don't hesitate to reach out, give me a call, shoot me a text message, send me an email, whatever works for you, I'm here for you and I'll talk to you soon.